Hey everyone, it's your girl Tara Michelle. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Opinionated Scents, our safe space to discuss all things fragrance, whether we like them or not. Today I have a fantastic video for you guys. Lulu, the famous Lulu, the queen of the lives Lulu, the queen of keeping it real well. I'll share that crown with her. <laughs> Lulu sent me 21 different samples of fragrances that she wanted me to try. Yes, you heard me say 21. Now, it was supposed to be five. I'm happy to say that there's only one of these fragrances that right off the bat, I'm like, no, no. And then there are a couple where I'm like, this is cool, but not for me. And then there are some that I am pleasantly surprised by. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Just in case you guys wanted to see my sample bag, here it is. All of the beautiful, lovely, luxurious samples that she sent me. I've already tested these. Um, she sent this to me, no joke, like two or three months ago. But like 21 fragrances that I really wanted to give a fair shot to on my skin, as well as smell them a few times on the sticks. Um, yeah, it just took me a little while, but she's been patiently waiting for this video. So I'm so happy to put it up for her and for you guys. The first one I want to go over with you guys is called Black Musk from The Body Shop. We have pear, pink pepper, and bergamot in the top. We have licorice, heliotrope, and ylang ylang in the mid. And we have black vanilla husk, which is new to me. I've never seen a black vanilla husk as a note, but I dig it. Chocolate, black musk, patchouli, and vetiver. So this one I like. This one smells like I'm a musk girl though, and this is such a pretty, clean musk. The chocolate added is just oh, brilliant. However, this does remind me of like a body butter or um, a body mist, a body spray. I don't consider this to be a perfume, and it's not one that I would see myself reaching for often. Does it smell great? Yes. I consider this to be more of a fragrance that I would wear to sleep or maybe just a lounge around the house. So it's not one that I need in my collection, but that does not mean it does not smell good. It smells really good. And again, that is Black Musk by The Body Shop. This next one is called Lavandis Trianon, I think. This is from Maison Lancome. This is the very first one from this line that I've ever smelled. I really felt honored to even get this because everybody was talking about it. Like there were certain clicks that all found out about it, kept it to themselves, ordered it, and then dropped their videos pretty much on the same day. We even had people doing lives with them, you know, discussing it at the same time. Shout out to Lulu again. Um, yeah, and that was fun. You know, I've heard such mixed reviews. Either people love it or they hate it. There seems to be no in between, but I'm that girl that's in between. I'm that girl who, while it's a unicorn fragrance because it's discontinued, nobody can find it, and it just comes in spurts. I get the, the thrill of that, but no. So let's go over the notes. We have lavender, vanilla, vanilla sugar, Madagascan vanilla, and milk. I get that. I do. This is a really pretty fragrance. The opening is a little off to me because I feel like the lavender is trying to quiet the rest of the vanilla down and figure out how to weave its way through and blend well. Well, it does figure it out. By the mid on into the dry down, it figures it out and it is a very pretty fragrance. But again, to me, I wouldn't spend more than 40 or 50 bucks on this. This is not something that I absolutely have to have in my collection. It smells great on me, but it also reminds me of a bedtime fragrance. This isn't something I'm reaching for to wear to work. I don't think the projection is loud enough. This is very much a close quarter fragrance on me. My, it's a, it's, it, it becomes a skin scent, if I'm being honest. And I hate to say that because I know people love their Mason Lancomes. I'm not trying to offend anybody. Beautiful fragrance in the mid and in the dry down. But, you know, L'Entre di Melissimi, guys, you know. So, 
here are the notes. We have bitter orange and ginger in the top, orange blossom, neroli, and tuberose in the mid, and almond milk, patchouli, musk, and vetiver in the base. This is the, man, it smells so good. Man, it smells so good. I will have a bottle of this. I'm waiting on somebody's sale for Mother's Day. I'm, listen, mm -mm. I love orange and ginger, so the opening is stunning. And everything else to follow just blends so beautifully, so beautifully. I love this. This next fragrance is from Etat Libre de Orange. Yeah, I have no idea. And this one is called True Lust. There's actually a whole bunch more to that, but uh-uh. So let me go over the notes because there are a ton of notes in this fragrance. And when I tell you, you get them all, I mean, this is just one big mishmash mess of a fragrance. And when I say mess, I literally mean because they threw everything but the kitchen sink in it, but it isn't awful. It doesn't smell bad. I just would never wear it. However, I know a few people who I think would dig this. They're all much, 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 much older than me, like in their 60s and early 70s, but that doesn't make this any less of a pretty fragrance. It's just too mature for me. So in the top, we have violet, rum, coconut, rose, and ginger. In the mid, you have osmanthus, ylang ylang, tangerine, jasmine, lily of the valley. And in the base, you have leather, sandalwood, rice, and ambergris. A whole lot. And you smell it all. It's got a freshness to it, a cleanness to it, a zestiness to it. Um, it's just doing too much. This will be, I can see this as a bath salt. I can see it as a shower gel, as a hand lotion. It's just doing too much for me, guys. Like this airplane right now is doing too much for me. Pretty, but just not for me. Next in line, we have Lanta D Intense. I love this one. It reminds me of Narciso by Narciso Rodriguez, the white cube. If you ever had that one and it was too much for you, like too much, just a, like a harshness in either the musk or the vetiver to your nose, this one is a much more feminine, easy to wear version. Man, this reminds me so much of Narciso the White Cube. I, I, I just, it's it, immediate, immediate. As soon as I smelled it, I was like, whoa, that reminds me of a, a much more feminine, softer, easy breezy, wearable Narciso White Cube. Because there are some people who just cannot take the vetiver and the musk in that one. This one, hey baby, they perfected the formula. I really, really, really like this one and could also see me getting it. Let me find them both for a great sale for Mother's Day somewhere. Because mm, I don't have the white cube anymore. I still have the others, but I got rid of the white cube and I used all of the black cube. By the way, nobody ever talks about the EDT. I never see anyone talking about that black cube. It's stunning. It's more floral and more green. So the musk is less, you know, powerhouse-y. It's not a word, but we're going to vibe. And I never hear anybody talk about it, which is a, a huge uh, injustice. But baby, I'm telling you right now, this intense version is everything. Next, we are talking about the one that I think started it all. L'Entre de or the Parfum. I'm not sure though, because again, I'm so late to the party on this whole line. But this is the one I ordered immediately. I really like this. I really do. I think I like Melisi, Melisi me or whatever it is the most. And then I think I like Intense because of how much it reminds me of Narciso, the white cube, which I don't have currently. Like I said, a more easy wearable version, but this one right here, I found this for a great price today. It was just there. It's feminine, it's pretty. Let's go over the notes. Top notes, pear and bergamot. Middle notes, tuberose, orange blossom, jasmine, sambac, and then patchouli, vanilla, and broxa and vetiver rounded out in the base. This is pretty. This is everything feminine. This is absolutely work appropriate. This could be your everyday signature scent. And I think to me, it smells like it will be great for all year round. Last, and the one that I like the least, 
but it is still pretty. We have the EDT version of L'Entre D from the House of Givenchy. So on the top, we have Poppy. And in the mid, we have Tuberose, Orange Blossom, and Musk. And then in the base, we have Patchouli and Vetiver. Yep, just making sure, double check and making sure I got that right. So yes, um, what name any notes to remember and I can literally smell them all. But mm, this is so pretty. It's much more floral than the other ones. And it's lighter and brighter and cleaner. Um, it's it's right there on the line of being too floral for me. But it's still passable. If someone gifted this to me, I would absolutely rock it. But over the other three, this definitely comes in last place. And it's not one I'm really looking to add to my collection. But if you're type, the type of person who is looking for a signature fragrance for spring and for summer, as a matter of fact, I think you can wear any of these all year round, but this one is definitely going to be prettier to me in the spring. And if you just want something to add to your collection that's ultra feminine and floral and fresh, this will be a good choice. I wouldn't be mad at you. I have heard so many people talk about this fragrance. And to be honest, I would usually just tune them out because I'm really tired of rose. Even though I just call myself starting to like it, you know, in small doses. Um, I just wasn't into it. But baby, let me tell you something. Come through Mansara. Rose is greedy though. I'm, I'm blown away. That opening is everything. It's so much going on. And that rose is like, I don't care if I'm surrounded by 20 other, you know, notes. I'm about to shine, baby. And I absolutely love this fragrance oh the dry down is where it just becomes so exquisite it's disgusting like I, I don't even know what to do right now but uh, i don't know who i am anymore the notes in the top are peach black currant mandarin orange coconut and pink pepper like where, where are we going wrong nowhere the mid is rose flowers don't you don't you just love when they do stuff like that Flowers and jasmine, and then the base notes are white musk, sugar, vanilla, amber, and benzoin. I feel like this is about to enter my collection. I do not need another Mansara. Mansara's, the, the, the quantity that you get from them is astonishingly ridiculous. You're never going to make it through them if you have a collection the size of mine. But I'm telling you, baby... I'm getting this. Next, this next one is from Banana Republic. Like who knew? I've never shopped there, but I knew enough to know they had clothes. And I think Michelle Obama shopped there. I'm not sure. What I do know is that Gardenia and Cardamom, I ordered it the same day I smelled it. The very first day that I smelled it. I said, what this is and this is absolutely a floral but this is the type of floral that is not headache inducing and the focus for me is pretty much that um gardenia so um it says it opens with a heady sensual scent of gardenia mixed with a juicy note of mandarin and in the mid you have cardamom and tuberose and then in the base, you have balsamic amber and smoky driftwood. They said that this is unisex, and I could absolutely see that. Anybody who wants to smell amazing and clean and fresh would wear this. So that'd be me. And while I think it pulls way more feminine than masculine, everybody can wear what they want when they want, how they want, I needed this in my life. I, I just, this feels so 90s to me. This feels so 90s and so happy and so carefree. And you playing either Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Morissette, um, you know, thanking the heavenly skies above that you are not going through this terrible breakup. Or you're listening to Dookie by Green Day. Either way, you are living your best life and you're smelling like, you know, this. I love it. Love it. This boy, Serge Luton, better come on through. Come through. Ugh. So next up, we have Flores de Orangere. 
I guess is how you say it, by Serge Luton. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So let me read your notes. <sighs> Orange blossom, jasmine, Indian tuberose, citruses, white rose, hibiscus, neroli, cumin, musk, and woody notes. There is something about the Indian tuberose. I really feel like that is the tuberose that hits me the wrong way. However, I did a little research and usually when that shows up, there's also woody notes. And so I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but there is something in this that kills the perfection that I feel like this was meant to be. I just cannot, I cannot. It's just too much tuberose. And it's only one kind of tuberose in here. So I feel like it's that type of tuberose and I feel like it's the woodsy notes that are pulling it too, just off to me. Everything else is perfection. That opening, that orange, oh my gosh, that spice, the citruses. This should have been a masterpiece for me, but it's just a little off-putting with, I think, the tuberose and the woodsy notes. I think they're doing too much for me. But guys, if you like those notes, I suggest you get your nose on this. This is a really, 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 really great fragrance. And if it wasn't for that one little just mm, that I just can't get past, I would have purchased this immediately. This just smells like it was supposed to be perfection. Oh my goodness, I hate that I cannot get over that. Like seriously, I really enjoyed this one. Minus that part that I can't get past. <laughs> this next fragrance threw me for a loop. When I first sprayed it initially in the air for about three seconds, I immediately thought about Chagoff Oud, Casablanca, Valencia, and Florence. I said, okay, this has some type of weird note to it. Where are we going with this? Because those are all Swiss Arabian fragrances, and this is a Mancetta. So, soon as I smelled it on the strip, I thought Jasmine Wisp by Razazzi. And then immediately jumped over to a couple of dual fragrances that I have, most importantly, Pure Gold Nectar, which is a dupe of something that I can't even recall right now. But the citrus is in it. There's something about the citrus use in it that reminds me so much of Jasmine Wisp and so much of Pure Gold Nectar from Dua that I'm just like, yes, this is fire. This is everything. I love this. But because it reminds me so much of Jasmine Wisp and Pure Gold Nectar, I absolutely don't need it. But I'll keep this in mind when I'm done with those two. Baby, this is called Juicy Flowers. Listen, listen. Yep. This smells almost identical to Pure Gold Nectar, seriously. And the same vibes as um, Jasmine Wisp. I absolutely adore it. Okay, so the notes um, in the top are red fruits, citruses, pear, pink pepper. The middle notes are rose, peach, sandalwood, and jasmine. And then to round it all off, in the base we have white musk, raspberry, ambergris, and vanilla. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. It lasted on me all day. Now on my skin, um, I got about a good four hours before it started to lighten up, but it was on my clothes for days after that. When I went to wash, I could still smell it. So, Mansara. I am starting to understand why Lulu is the queen of Mansara. We should start a petition for them to sign a deal with her. She should be their single solitary spokesperson. The next two we have are from the House of Ganache Parfums. Like I said, JC is absolutely the king of all things truly gourmand and foodie. His stuff is so realistic that a lot of it I cannot wear. Like I just cannot literally smell like a brownie and literally smell like dark chocolate. I don't know what it is. I will use them as room sprays all day long, but I just, I don't know. For me, it doesn't translate well, but they're stunning. They're stunning. He makes the kind of fragrances that make you have to go in the kitchen and start baking because you need whatever you're smelling from him. So if you are a foodie and you like to smell like real edible meals and dishes and desserts, get your hands on ganache. So this one is leche y galletas. And I think it's supposed to be like milk and cookies. Pretty. Too realistic for me. Like, I want to go get those butter cookies from the store 
and a cup of milk, which I don't even drink, but it has to be cow's milk because that's, that's where I'm going with this. This is amazing. Amazing. And then there's Smolder, which, oh my, I don't even know what's supposed to be in Smolder, but I smell cacao and like dark chocolate and heaven and cherubs and angels. I actually might get smolder. Like I maybe I could smell like this. I, I I want to smell like this. This is a freaking amazing. This next one is called Mirabelle by the Canto. I think that's how you pronounce it. This one is a beautiful, sweet fragrance that reminds me a lot of something else I love. This one runs about $85, in between $85 and $100, depending on where you're looking. Um, the other one that it reminds me of is a $200 fragrance. So if you can get your hands on this one, if you're looking for that same vibe, really, I think it could be a do but it. When I smell them side by side, there are slight differences, but we'll talk about that in a second. Let's go over the notes. In the top, we have vanilla, malt, and opopanax. In the mid, we have milk, rum, buchu, lavender, bourbon, geranium, and rose. And then in the base, we have vanilla absolute, tonka bean, cloves, patchouli, and white musk. This smells like a fantastic, sweet, slightly, ever so slightly spicy vanilla. And so that's where the difference comes in between this one and vaniglia by Mazzolari. One of the most amazing, masterful creations ever made. This one reminds me so much of that, that I can honestly say, if you cannot afford a $200 bottle of perfume like the Niglia um, from Mazzolari, get your hands on the $85 bottle of Mirabelle by V Canto. If you can, that might be a little steep for people too. But I smelled this and I went, whoa, this reminds me so much of, um, Vaniglia, not an exact dupe side by side when I did them. I'm like, no, Vaniglia is way sweeter. There's no spice. It's more refined. It's just, it's a $200 perfume versus an $85 bottle of perfume. So, but this is excellent. Mirabelle is, is absolutely, if I did not own Vaniglia, I would have ordered this on day one as well. I could wear this. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, this is so good. If you like sweet fragrances, this is one. This is extremely sexy, extremely sexy. This next one is from Banana Republic as well, and it's called Tobacco and Tonka. No. I'll keep it short and sweet. I do not like the note of tobacco. The Tonka in this is beautiful, but the tobacco, I just cannot do. If you like tobacco notes and tonka bean, I would suggest you get your nose on it because I feel like if I liked tobacco, I would rock that all the time in the fall. Absolutely. And in the early cool days of spring as well, especially for a date night fragrance. Look, I can't deny when something is good, it's just good. That is a good fragrance. However, th the tobacco makes my head hurt. Like I. I'm anti-tobacco on all fronts. In reality and in fragrances, I don't want it. Keep it away. These next two are my last Manseras. I'm going to go ahead and be brief about the ones that I'm not, you know, really, really feeling. Let's start with Pearl. No. <laughs> there is something in Pearl that drives me crazy. I really do not like it. There's something in it that I feel like would be really, really pretty if it was on its own, but whatever is surrounding it, nope. Nope. Jardine Exclusive. And I used to have a sample of this. I could not take the opening. I still, in fact, cannot take the opening. But baby, the dry down. Mm, 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 mm. The top notes are pear, white peach, caramel, lemon, black currant, Sicilian orange, green apple. Then in the mid, we have jasmine, ambergris, violet, and Bulgarian rose. And in the base, we have white musk, Madagascar, vanilla, and sandalwood. I don't know what that is. Cause I don't have a problem with any of these specifically. Maybe it's just that they're clashing at some point. 
I want to love this, but there's something that prevents me from doing so. I would say it's a great perfume. I think anyone could pull it off, but it's definitely more feminine to me. And there's something that doesn't work well for me, but please don't let that stop you from getting your nose on it. Baby, it's a good one. It really is a good one. It just won't work for me. I wonder how crazy that sounds to people who are new to the perfume world. If you've been around her for a while, then you get what I'm saying. But to people who are new to perfume, they're probably like, shit, we're talking about it's good, but it's not for her. Not everything is for me. My nose can tell quality and my nose can tell greatness minus something that's off-putting for me. So I like to make sure I, I state that to you guys. I think it's a really, really good perfume. There is just one thing, there's something that um, kills it for me. So, yeah. Again, that's Jardine Exclusif by Mansara. This next one is Armoff's Club Day Nui. No. No, thank you. Please no. Just no. And people say it's like a dupe for, I think, Coco Mademoiselle. I don't know if this is the one that they were talking about, but I'm going to go with no there too because if... Coco Mademoiselle smelled this way, I would not have it. It doesn't stink. I just would absolutely never in life wear it. Here's another Etat Libre de Orange. I, I guess that's how you say it. I don't know. Um, this one is called Dangerous Complicity. And here are the notes. Rum, Chinese Osmanthus, Cashmere Wood, Ylang Ylang, Coconut, Egyptian jasmine, sandalwood leather, ginger, bay leaf, patchouli, calamus, and laurinox. Mm, I don't know. What I can tell you about this fragrance, I like it in the dry down. The opening is a lot because there are 475 million notes in this. But the dry down is pretty. This smells like, you know, something Jennifer Garner would wear. No idea why she's popped into my head. But I feel like when she's doing those Capital One Venture Car commercials, this is what she smells like. Not my vibe, but it is pretty. I can't, I can't say it's not. So I was mistaken. I actually do have one more man, Sarah. It is called Amber Fever, and I love it. I don't know what Lubu trying to do to me, but I am not about to have 100 bottles of Mancera, baby. That's what we're not about to do. This smells amazing. This actually reminds me of like Burberry Her mixed with MFK 540. It just has those vibes. Um, the notes in the top are caramel, whiskey, tonka bean, and hazelnut. Um, in the mid, we have rose petals, Indian jasmine, and violet. And then in the base notes, we have amber, white musk, teak wood, and oak moss. This is stunning. I absolutely love this. I think somebody told me they thought it ran masculine. Not at all to me. This is very feminine. I guess a man could also wear this too. Nice little cuddling fragrance. But this is pretty. And if I didn't already own Burberry Her, Burberry Her Intense, and MFK 540, I might snatch this up. Yeah, I like that whole vibe. That smells really, really good. Last but not least, she gave me something titled Tuberose 01. I love you, Lulu. So the opening of that fragrance is so absolutely horrifying to me. It assaulted all of my senses. I wanted to file a police report and a complaint press charges and everything else. No ma'am, no sir. And I mean in all capital letters. No ma'am, no sir. No nobody, no baby, no son, no daughter, no child, no aunt, no uncle. No, 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 okay? No. Ooh, help me. So, I almost forgot about this. I literally looked over on my bed and was like, what's that? And I go, oh, that was the one I was going to ignore. But I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't. Because when I went and picked it up and was like, nope, you got to go through it. You know, I don't ever like, like me and Lulu play back and forth about Wild Python. But I feel okay with that because Wild Python actually smells really pretty to me. It is just too heady. It's too strong. And it gives me a headache. 
It also smells like, you know, it, it's for an older woman. Lulu is about 13 years older than me. So when I am her age, maybe I will love it as well. But that's our inside joke. If she brings up Wild Python on her channel, she'll immediately go, Tara, zip it. And then start talking about it so that I know not to be in the chat like, here she go again with that old lady perfume. It's just, a, it's, it's fun. If you're not already subscribed to Lulu, by the way, you need to subscribe to her and you have to watch her lives. You will get your entire life. It's just too much. So back to this tuberose one uh, thing. So I went over there and I picked it up and I smelled the stick and I'm like, really? So it dries down into a very pretty, very soft, very hand lotion type of tuberose. I still would never in any lifetime wear this. However, if I had, you know, an old, I, I could see like a, some of my coworkers that are in their 60s and 70s wearing this. This almost smells like first lady sitting on the front, the, you know, the front row in, in the in the, in the the pulpit or whatever, you know, in the pew, what they call it. Mm -mm. It's been a minute. But yeah, it is, it, you know, a thousand times better in the dry down than it is. All that opening, y'all. That opening, that opening always almost took me back to the north side and the west side where I felt like I had to fight every day. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody's really testing your gangster. Like they testing your resolve. They trying to see, you know, just, woo, boy, you know. Listen, new. No. However, if you love tuberose, like tuberose, get your nose on that one. I could see a lot of people liking that. In my head, they're all gonna be much older than me. But whatever your flavor, if you like tuberose, go ahead and get your nose on it. So again, if you haven't subscribed to Lulu, I will leave her information in my description box. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do as well. Also click that like button and the notification bell so that you never miss any of my future uploads. Guys, thank you for hanging in there with me. Let me know in the comments if you own any of these, if my description of them made you want to try them, or if you know of some of these as well and you're like, mm -mm, girl, I agree with you. That is not it. That is not it. Either way, you know I want to hear about it in the comments. And until then, bye. <laughs> Lulu, don't kill me about that two rose mess. Mm -mm.